Hi, welcome to my channel, All About Nursing. Here we talk everything nursing. Today's topic is the nursing round. What is the nursing round? Nursing rounds is what we do when we go into each assigned room every hour and systematically take care of our patient. This is on top of everything else that we do. So why do we do nursing rounds? And how do we do nursing rounds? We will discuss this in this video. What are the six P's? Stay tuned and we will talk about it. All About Nursing. The nursing rounds. What are the six P's of the nursing round? Let's see. So we got pain control, we got patient toileting, patient positioning, presence of nurse, periphery, pumps, machines at bedside. What we mean by pain control? When we go into the patient's room, we have to ask if the patient is in pain. So pain control. How do we manage pain control? Pain control, the first P, is the pain assessment of the patient. We use different types of pain scales. For example, you can ask your patient, are you having pain, sir? From, us, from 1 to 10, using the numeric pain scale, 10 being your worst pain, 1 being Mm, tolerable pain. Can you tell me what is your pain scale? You can use the Wong face scale. You can use the pain art scale. There are different types of scales for different situations. So you use the pain scale that's appropriate to you at that point in time. If your patient is having pain, you please provide them with pain medication. Patient toileting. So think about it. You're in bed. You can't walk because you have a broken leg and you want to pee. Oh my God, I want to pee. What are you going to do? You're going to press the bell. Sometimes the nurse takes a while to come to the room so we need to go to the patient's rooms regularly so you ask the patient do you need to pass urine or do you need to avoid in the toilet bedpan the urinal or even sometimes their linen is wet so you change their linen this is to prevent falls especially in the elderly sometimes incontinence is embarrassing for people so when they have an incontinent episode they try to clean up themselves they try to get out of the bed, take off the linens. These things result in fall. You go to the patient's room, you do all the toileting with them. They are safe. They are made, put back in their bed, comfortable. Number three, patient's positioning. So, patient is unable to turn their self. Think about the patient who has broken limb. Can't turn. Oh my God. Peter, you are lying in a bed and you can't move and you've been lying in one spot for four hours. Oh my God. What is going to happen to you? You're going to start to sweat. You're going to start to feel uncomfortable. You're going to have pressure injuries forming because that patient might try like rubbing their feet. Like you will see some patients at the bottom of their heel is red because they're uncomfortable and they've been trying to move themselves by rubbing their feet on the bed trying to inch themselves to get that uncomfortable feeling out of your back think about it the linen is all crooked and and bent up and there's crumbs in the bed and you're just lying there and you, you can't call for help because for some reason the call bell isn't next to you how do you think the patient is going to feel so we have to make sure we go to their rooms and smoothen their linens reposition our patients Make sure to prevent pressure injuries. Increasing our age cap scores. Hospitals like it when we do that. Presence of a nurse. Oh my, that one is so important. The presence of the nurse is so reassuring to our patient. Do you have any idea what it's like being in a hospital and no one is there with you and the only friendly face that can speak to you is the nurse? Because that's what we do. Hi, Mr. John. I'm Nurse Brooks. That is how we introduce ourselves. So this patient would love to see your beautiful face. This patient would love to speak to you. Sometimes when the doctor speaks to the patients, they don't even understand what they said. We are there to break it down into layman terms. We are there to hold their hand, literally and figuratively. We are there to take care of our patients' lonely feelings. Talk to them, hear them out. We are their advocates. That is what our presence does. Our presence at our patient's bedside provides comfort. It provides a sense of advocacy. Somebody is there to stand on my court. Remember nurses, our patients need to see our smiling faces, okay? Then periphery. Oh my God, my pet peeve. I hate when I go in a room and my patient's table is all the way across from them on the other side of the room and on the table is the call bell is the water is the cell phone and it's because somebody else went into the room did something with the patient and didn't think it kind enough to 
bring back their stuff at their bedside. That's why we are here. We are to ensure our patients are not left like if they are not human. Put yourself in their shoes. If I need to call for help, how am I going to get to the table where my call bell is all the way on the other side of the room? That's what periphery means. You make sure that they have. You ask them, Mr. John, do you want your phone at your bedside? Do you need to get water? Do you need ice? Do you want some jello or some snack? Do you want something that can make you more comfortable? How can I help you? Do you want me to bring your bag of belongings right here on the chair that you can reach it safely? Periphery nurses, these are the reasons why we do that. We check the patient's periphery, okay? And last but not least, patient pumps and machines. We use a lot of pumps, guys. We use the IV pump, we use the SCDs or the foot pump. We use, sometimes we use the um, PCA pump. Sometimes it's different machines we have. So what would you do? Leave the patient with an alarming machine at their bedside. Just alarming, going off, going off, going off. And you know when we go home, when we hear alarming noises all day, we hear it in our head. So picture somebody is lying in a bed, hearing this machine, making this annoying sound, trying to get some rest to feel better. Please check your pump. Please check your machine. Don't have a SCD or a foot pump on your patient's feet that's not even on. That doesn't make sense. We have to check our machine. Please, when we go to our patient's room, let us practice the six. Once we cover the six P's, we cover everything. Everything. Call lights will be decreasing. Call bells will not be annoying as much as they feel sometimes. We need to be more aware of what we are doing. Do things with a purpose. That is why we have the six P's to follow a system. So whenever we do the six P's, we make sure our patient lay in bed more comfortable. The benefits of doing these six P's, less fall, less pressure injury, better patient's experience, better age cap scores. So we want better quality for our patients. So please guys, remember when we make our round, it's not just to pull up our side, our side bar or make sure the bed, the call bed, um, the bed alarm is on. It's to make sure the patient as well is okay. All right. So remember again, pain control, patient toileting, patient positioning, presence of a nurse, periphery, pumps and machines at bedside. That include the bed alarm, the side rail, a vitals machine if it's on, an IV pump, all these different things. Please don't just leave the patient's room and act as if all I did come and just give you some medication and walk out. Remember they are people just like one day we could be a patient and we want the nurse that has to take care of us. Practice the six. So remember it as you do your daily rounding every hour. Make sure have a smile. Be pleasant. No one wants to see you and they are in their worst moment of their life feeling horrible and you come in grumpy and um, and not talking to the patient. You are their advocate. It comes as if we are their friends. We are there to talk for them, to talk with them. That is how we get information. So remember guys, nurses do it better and nursing rounding is very important. Have a good one. See you next week. Bye.